So, so uh, my name is Shipeng, and today I'm going to talk about um, voxel rendering engine design for iOS. Uh, to give you a bit of background of this topic, um, so I was working on this uh, personal project. It, uh, it is a 3D uh, design app for iOS, and a big part of the project is uh, I need to create a voxel rendering engine for it. So today, I just, just want to share with you uh, some of the things I learned uh, in the journey, and hopefully it could be something helpful for, uh, helpful for you uh, as well. So first, uh, what is voxel? Basically, they are uh, 3D pixels. The structure of voxels are very simple. Um, they have x, y, and z uh, coordinates, and they have a color as well. So that's it. It's very simple structure. Uh, it's a bit like Lego bricks. They, the, the, the most beautiful thing about this is um, they are very simple, but if you combine these simple blocks together and uh, add a bit of imagination, you can get these amazing, amazing results. Just like the photo I'm showing here. And another thing is for voxels, the models created with voxels, uh, they can be very easily 3D printed. And these two models here are uh, designed and uh, printed with the app that I created. Uh, this one is Santa Claus, and this one, I think, is a bird. <laughs> OK, so uh, voxels are cool. How do we design a rendering engine for it? Uh, so for voxel rendering engines, basically it does these several things. First, of course, is rendering. So um, let's say I have a group of voxels. We need to uh, render it in a fast and beautiful way. Second is these are not static data. Everything is very uh, dynamic, and users, they need to uh, be able to add, uh, delete, update, or move those voxels around. Um, if, uh, as the model size gets bigger and bigger, let's say if you have a voxel world uh, of which the size is 64 by 64 by 64, um, we're looking at uh, 260,000 voxels. That's a lot of data to process. So uh, let's start, the, start with something really simple, how to render one voxel. So it is really simple, actually. All we need to do is to draw a 3D cube at the x, y, z coordinate uh, with the correct color, and then we have it, right? Uh, one thing I do want to mention is uh, in 3D graphics, uh, just in case if you, if you don't know this already, uh, we usually use triangles to, to draw everything. So for this case, uh, a cube has six faces, and each face we need to use two uh, triangles. So uh, to draw this cube, we need 12 triangles. And let's move on to something more uh, complicated. Uh, let's say we have this model, which has around 6,000 voxels in it. Uh, by the way, anyone, uh, can anyone tell me what is this? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> Apple II. Uh, it's Macintosh, actually. Um, so. How do we render this one? Um, we can use it, uh, we can go with a really naive way, which is basically uh, draw a 3D cube for each voxel. Uh, but the thing is, this is very inefficient. Um, to draw this 3D model, we, are, uh, we need to draw 70,000 triangles. That's crazy, it doesn't make sense. And there's one easy way to uh, make it much faster is we can sp skip the unseen voxels because we know a lot of voxels inside, users cannot see them, why bother rendering them? So if we do that, uh, we just need to draw 5,800 triangles. That's much less compared to the original ones. And we can actually do even better than this. So let's say I have a knife and I uh, slice a layer from the frontmost surface of this Macintosh. So what I get is something like this. And if we take a look at this one, we notice that 
uh, we're using a lot of small boxes to, to render this. And this is not efficient. What we can do is we can combine all these small uh, boxes into a big one. And the, if we do things like that, uh, the triangle uh, numbers can be further reduced. OK, so we already know how to render uh, the voxel models uh, in a fast way. The next is how do we make them look good? Um, basically, we need to apply some nighting on it. So let's take a look at this uh, Jeep model here. Uh, with no nighting, it looks very flat. Um, there are a lot of details missing for it as well. There's no edges. You don't know what's going on here. So uh, we need to, uh, we can use some techniques like uh, ambient occlusion. Um, probably you have heard these words before. Um, ambient occlusion, SSAO in computer games. Uh, anyone heard of these words before? Okay, so on. I guess most of us are hardworking professionals, so we don't play, <laughs> we don't really play video games. <laughs> so basically what ambient occlusion does is, uh, so for uh, vertices in the corners, they should look darker compared to the vertices uh, on a flat surface. And that's what it does. Usually it is, uh, it is very expensive in terms of performance because uh, there are really some com complicated computations you need to do to make it work for normal games. But for voxels, because the unique data structure, um, we, we can get it for almost free. Uh, let's take a look at this example here. So let's say I want to determine the brightness of the vertex here. All, we, all I need to look at is actually these three blocks. This one on the side, another one on the side, and this one on the corner. Three blocks. Each block can be occupied or not occupied, so two states. Three blocks, each one has two states. That gives us eight different combinations. And it becomes so simple that we just need to think of these eight scenarios and we can create something like a hash map so we can calculate the brightness right away. Uh, for example, for um, th th these scenarios, the vertex is in the corner, so we assign occlusion level three to it. It's the darkest. And for example, this one, uh, there are no blocks blocking it. Uh, probably, it's, probably it's on a flat surface, so uh, we assign um, zero occlusion level to it, so it will be very bright. And here is a quick demo of uh, how it looks like on iOS. And it looks pretty cool, right? Okay, so... Um, the picture on the left is no nighting, nothing. Uh, the model doesn't look beautiful. Uh, a lot of details are missing. And this one on the right, uh, we can see the edges, we can see a lot of details, and we have ambient occlusion here as well. So uh, it looks more realistic and it's more beautiful. And that's all for my talk. Thank you. Thank you, Shipen, for the different methods of voxel rendering. If you have any questions, you can look for Shipen later on. Okay, thank you.